Right. At the bottom of the hour, we've got recently retired Marine Corps Colonel Matt Smithmack joining us for an update. And Robert Tosh Plumley, famous CIA whistleblower. And then at the bottom of the hour, I'm going to get into all the other news and world events I haven't covered. Then Paul Watson always does a powerful fourth hour. He'll be hosting from London, England. Matt Smithmack uh, was on the main board uh, at Guantanamo. He's commanded major bases. I'm not going to go over his giant bio, but he's, he's got an amazing career. He's been threatened, physically attacked for the information he's exposing here. They're trying to talk to Congress. Congress won't give him the time of day. Senators, House members, uh, this is so dangerous, what you're about to hear. And, of course, we've had uh, Brian Terry's brother on. This is about Benghazi. This isn't just about Fast and Furious. And this is about Brian Terry being killed so they could cover up the fact that guns weren't just being shipped from gun shops. That was to blame the overall operation on gun owners, but from military bases. There's about to be another shipment right now. As we speak, it's about to happen or is happening. And do we call Homeland Security on air? So this is on record. Do we call Congress? What do we do? What do we do when the whistleblowers have come out, it's happened, and, and no one gets in trouble? We're reaching a level where we have all the witnesses of the stand-down order at Benghazi. We knew about that four years ago when it happened, but now it's confirmed. We know there were troops 25 minutes away. Loaded up on an aircraft, told to stand down. Now they can ship the guns directly to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And we can have people out blowing the whistle that are being physically attacked and death threatened. What comes next? This is a new level. Uh, in fact, guys, I was asking, did, did you get me the Homeland Security phone number? We bring it into me? Thank you. Because I intend... I guess today, I've done it before, call Homeland Security on air and make a public report about this. But this is a public report on almost 200 stations around the country and millions listening and watching on the Internet right now and millions more uh, when, you know, the videos of this get posted. Hey, Alex, this is Nico. I'm popping in live right now to let you know that we've been searching for a number and we've been unable to locate one. Their, their website's been redesigned since Jakari did that stunt and they're pointing everybody to call 911 now. That's right, because those are the local threat fusion centers they have the whole see something, say something deal, and they still have some 800 numbers to the FBI. They still, you know what? I, I want to call the FBI Austin. And it actually says San Antonio, but it redirects to, to, to Austin. And then I guess, you know what? That's a good idea. I guess I could call the Austin police chief. I've got his number. But that'll be referred to the feds. But, I mean, this is Colonel Matt Smithmack, and this is Tosh Plumley. Um, we're going to go to him right now. I'm not going to go over his whole bio, but... Again, uh, the Marine Corps colonel has, I mean, let me just give you some of his bio here, Joint Strike Fighter Joint Program, Office USMC Requirements Officer, Tribunal Member and Chief of Staff, Naval Base Guantanamo Bay, Chief of Staff, uh, Naval ba uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, this is in the middle of his bio, uh, the Office for Administrative Review and the Detention of Enemy Combatants, uh, reviewing combatant status over 500 detainees and working closely with former Secretary of the Navy, FBI, CIA, DIA, and that endeavored. Deputy Branch Head, Aviation Manpower Headquarters, Marine Corps, currently consultant and entrepreneur. I mean, that's just a small part of his bio, but he's trying to tell Congress and trying to tell the FBI, and then all he gets is physically attacked from behind and death threats. I'm just hammering that here now that we're just doing an update because it's the end of the month, and the shipment's about to happen, and it's classified, so it's illegal. It's all the Hillary stuff. They're trying to tell Congress, and they won't, America. So, Matt, uh, Colonel smith Mac, thank you for coming on. Tosh Blumley's here as well. You guys just pop in and take control uh, here of the broadcast at the bottom of the hour and just get the info out because this is, this is short and sweet, not focusing in on the story. Folks know about it. Our audience does, but how to get reportage on the shipment that's about to happen or has happened. Uh, hey, Mr. Jones, it's uh, it's uh, Matt smith Mac. Yeah, and I wanted to say also, uh, Kent Terry um, said he'll be listening today. I let him know. Fantastic. I want to thank uh, him for his courage. So, uh, so, yes, so bottom line, uh, tell us about the we, shipment. What's about to happen? What do we do? Bottom line, sir, there's uh, you know, a shipment went. Uh, we let Congress know, uh, House Oversight, let them know. Uh, nothing, nothing. They did not act on that information. So the shipment went, went into Mexico, got on a train, went southeast to a port, and then and God knows where after that. And this was a few, a few days ago? Because you said it was at the end of the month. This was a few days ago. 
This would have been this would have been the 23rd of yeah. this month. Yes, sir. Just last time you were on, another, you said it was imminent. You weren't exactly sure when. So now it's happened. Weeks. Sure, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go. Yes, sir. Another shipment about in about three weeks or so, three to four weeks. Again, letting Congress know, letting them know there's a an, an individual willing and able to help them. Uh, Kent Terry knows this person. William Lajeunesse knows this person. All they need to do is engage with this person. And I think they'll, they'll, it, it, it's, it's that one area that the federal government, the executive branch, utilized to execute fast and furious in these kind of operations. But for some reason, the legislative branch seems reticent to want to access this domain that is we have a unique insight and opportunity to get into. So this would blow fast and furious, Hillary, the whole system, the kingdom come politically, and Congress won't act on it. Well, it's sad, sadly, it appears that way. Wow, well, this right, is just such a huge deal, and, and I knew that was coming up at the end of the month, so I wanted to get you on. Uh, so, so this has now happened, and it's just ongoing. Have you received any other threats, Colonel? No, no, uh, no other threats. I mean, you know, the the kind of the the, the friendly friendly warnings from people who do who do con are concerned, saying, "Hey, you know, back off. You don't want to be found face down in a gutter somewhere." But um, but uh, this is too important. You know, as I said before, in your first time on your show, uh, we're we're citizens, not not subjects. And uh, as a Marine, you know, Brian Terry deserves my full effort and faith to make sure closures come to him and his family. Well, sure. What what, what if they're shipping five year old kids next? Which you know the UN does. Are we supposed to just let them ship little kidnapped kids out? I mean, how long do we sit here and watch crime committed? Let's go to Tosh Plumley, famous. Uh, whistleblower. Tosh, you've been helping break this wide open because folks knew you had the courage to talk about it. Uh, what's the bottom line for listeners and viewers out there that well, Congress stood down and let this happen? Okay, let me let me back up here and see if I can get, uh, get a little bit of background of how Matt and I got together. Four years ago on your program, we mentioned exactly what we're covering now. We talked about guns going across the border to Mexico which was all up and over and above Fast and Furious. That Fast and Furious was a cutout for an international gun running operation that was being filtered through Mexico to the Middle East and to, into Gaddafi's bunkers. That's been documented before the fact. We also documented on your program and other programs and on my Facebook page that monies were going back to the Hillary Clinton from foreign donations of people that was receiving weapons from our arsenals that was approved by uh, the Direct Commercial Sales Program Blue Lantern Report. This was all documented. Today, I don't know, a Huffington Post briefly put out an article uh, that confirmed information that went back four and a half years ago, uh, which was covered on your program and also on John B. Wells' program on Coast to Coast on November the 2nd, 2013. These were documented, uh, vetted information. That information was also, at that point in time, turned over to the U.S. Senate, the Congress, Trey Gowdy and Grassley in the form of 11 Benghazi questions that made direct references back to the gun running operation, which was legal at that point in time, but it was going across Mexico to the Mexican army. The Mexican army was filtering that some of the percentage of those weapons off and sending those weapons to the drug cartel, which was proven when Joaquin Guzman was arrested and some of those weapons ended up in his safe house. Now, what got the current situation between Matt and I together, his investigation, Terry, Brian Terry's investigation, and my investigation, all three dovetailed right together over a period of five years. Brian Terry was killed on, on uh, uh, December in 2010. Eight months later, we were sitting in Las Cruces, New Mexico, with five sectors of the Border Patrol Intelligence Unit, and we were telling them exactly what we are talking about today. The Senate, the Congress, the President of the United States, and the U.S. State Department did not, they said the information was from non-creditable sources, multiple sources, my, myself included. I went on Facebook page, mainly for protect myself and my colleagues from information before the fact by publishing in detail exactly what our investigation had run over. From a task force that was working out of Fort Bliss, Texas, into the uh, Mexican Marinos, and also uh, with the Mexican Army. We had infiltrated the Mexican Army, found out that they had informants that was working directly with the cartel, and all this information was passed on to the U.S. Senate and the Congress. Absolutely nothing was done. 
It was turned into political, a political that we, our crew and our investigators and our people and our military people had an ax to grind against this administration and they turned it into a political vendetta and made us look like total fools. As time progressed, the information became vetted and vetted and vetted. Now to bring Matt, Matt in and Matt can jump in anytime he wants, Matt got information about the information was, that I had was still ongoing. I knew it was ongoing from the military task force working out of Fort Bliss, Texas, which was known as Task Force 7, military operation, boots on the ground inside Mexico. Sure, I know. I've had family in Task Force 6 and 7. They just say the stuff going on is unbelievable, but won't tell me. I just know they've resigned out of those because they say it's so corrupt. Uh, what can you tell us, Colonel, about what's happening in these task forces and where all this is going now? You know, so this just dovetailing what Tosh said, I, I know uh, the military uh, had been involved uh, going back to 2005. You know, I was I was tasked to uh, go to MCS Yuma uh, for Campbell, Kentucky, to look for a military nexus uh, into at that time wide receiver and then fast and furious reported back on some of the things that I had found, not so much in Fort Campbell, but certainly in Yuma. And again, that was about 05 time frame when if you look at the, the genesis of Fast and Furious, um, the, the, the seeds of it under wide receiver, it began to blossom in Yuma and then kind of blossom out there you know, from Yuma, going, kind of going uh, to the, to the uh, eastern part of Arizona. Um, and again, uh, you know, not, not but August of 2014, I was um, uh, talked to by a, a person identifying himself as a, a Colonel Taylor, Air Force uh, OSI, telling me that the DOD was aware of um, uh, their installation and equipment uh, nexus between them and Fast and Furious, and, and now we know, you know, some of these weapons, Mr. Jones, are again not just not just um, hand, uh, handguns and rifles. These are laser-guided munitions. These are Stinger missiles. These are things that came out of you know the Hawthorne Depot up in Hawthorne, Hawthorne Nevada, and worked their way down. I mean, this and is, let's uh, be clear. Then now they're claiming in mainstream news, oh, ISIS built its own. Stinger missiles, and then they admit in the article, no, they actually got some, we don't know from where, to, to confuse people. So they're even putting cover stories in. Undoubtedly, ISIS is already blowing up and bringing down airliners, uh, yeah, you know, sir. one every yeah, few months. Sir. How long until they start using those Stinger missiles? And what is the political class thinking from both of you, Tosh Plumley and yeah, Colonel? I can insert something right here. The Stinger missiles that you made reference to was recorded. 400 of them was missing from our arsenals and some of them were taken out of the bunkers in Libya before Gaddafi was killed. We reported the missing, those 400 Stinger missiles missing. Senator John McCone, um, McCain, not McCone, that's the old CIA director. John McCain said that when pigs fly and the sun rises in the West, right in reference to Tosh Plumley alleging that there were Stinger missiles in ISIS hands. Two weeks later, those Stinger missiles was photographed in the back of brand new pickup trucks. It's not confirmed. So I, I guess the pig, yeah, it was confirmed. I guess the pigs do fly, and I guess the sun does set, uh, rise in the West. Now, I'm not upset with any of these politicians. As far as I'm concerned, they're all damn crooks, working for special interests and tied in with the International Crime Syndicate. I'll say it. I'll say what some of these people will not say. This is an International Crime Syndicate. It's an international gun-running operation. Now, I'm going to back up here. When those weapons went across to Mexico and the Marines, uh, Marinos investigated, confirmed what we had and what we had found in warehouses in Juarez, Mexico, that belonged to the cartel, and I photographed them. And we went in, and there's also a raided ranch that uh, they had a very bad day, according to what the Marinos told us at the Iron Fence, which has been photographed. I don't rattle, rattle, rattle. I'm not trying to rattle. I'm just trying to give background. When Matt come along and said, hey, they're still going on. I said, absolutely right. We know it's still going on. How do we get Congress and how do we get the Senate to act? All right, who approved it? It came from the U.S. State Department. They approved the applications for those weapons to leave the country and go to the Mexican Army. The Mexican Army filtrated a percentage of those weapons off to the drug cartels, three of them. Joaquin Guzman's uh, son in law was one of them. Sure. Well, also, El Chapo, who you know, El Chapo had 50 cows that were from the military. So so this is all going on. Here's the bottom line. Why would the criminal syndicate, why would it be crazy enough to give impads to ISIS and Al-Qaeda? I mean, obviously, they're doing this on purpose. It's still ongoing. It's not an accident from Fast and Furious. What is the end game? What is the master plan? 
It's simple. It's very simple. You've got a situation where we start the conflict. We escalate the conflict. We furnish weapons to both sides of the conflict. We keep it going, and then we filtrate that money back into various, not only the Clinton campaign or foundation and the Clinton Global Initiative, which only, by the way, only gives 3% of their funding back into contributions, which does a very good thing, very limited as it is. There's also 97% that goes to edu to uh, administrative costs or whatever and, and tremendous salaries. But anyway, that's another that's another thing that they Sure, FDI they steal money at every level. They're master criminals. I mean, I get it. So still, uh, the elite haven't done stuff like this before, unless you're talking about the 80s and they mopped all those up. So and, and let me ask the colonel, why do you think they're doing this? Sir, I think it's, uh, you go back to Rothschild, you know, you want to control an event, you control both sides. And I think we, uh, much, much like when Tosh was, uh, um, uh, involved when, in Cuba in 57. I mean, you know, the government uh, armed both sides of that, of that conflict. And uh, I, I hope and pray, and I recently emailed House Oversight, I said, I hope and pray that um, uh, ATF agent John Dotson, another true hero, wasn't entirely correct when he said, Matt, the politicians will always only do what's in their political self-interest. So uh, I hope to God this time their self-interest coincides with the right thing. Well, that's why we're doing this. Obviously, you're risking your life. Everybody here is. Let's, let's, not, let's not make bones about it. Because we understand that you can't just arm these radical groups with high-tech, high-impact weapons. And it shows our elite is getting more and more insane uh, before they try to stop this from happening. And they've obviously got some larger plan. And we want Congress and everybody to know when the planes get shot down with these, you're not going to cover it up. And it's going to come out, and you're not going to get away with it. Uh, this is just so out of control. Uh, Colonel smith -Mack? Yes, sir. Any other points you'd like you know, to add? John, yeah, one, one thing, if I could. I, uh, the, 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 the person who, uh, you know, Tosh knows him as well as, as, well as Kent and others. Uh, we, in short, information he had got to House Oversight end of September 2013. And just as a point of, again, before the fact information, the, the House Oversight was told, September, late September, I think September 23rd, 2013, that there were grenades and grenade launchers uh, involved with these weapons that go on south. It wasn't just handguns and, and, um, sure. and, uh, and long rifles. And not until October 30th, 2014, did DOJ OIG make that public. So when Congress this, says, this well, written nothing about, you have has, has led to anything, it's wrong. It's incorrect. This was written about in Narco News in 2010 and 2011, exactly what Matt just said. Bill Conroy, a good investigative reporter, reported about this in a series of articles through Narco News. Any listener out there can go run Bill sure, Conroy. I, I remember uh, Shelley Castile, uh, the former DA agent, retired. He said they tried to hire him out at, by the King Ranch to actually train drug cartels, uh, Sinaloa and others, as part of a huge civil war coming in Mexico. That was before all the killings started. That's right. So the point being, this has been on record for a number of years. But our, and our agencies have refused, including CIA, and I'll say it right straight into your camera, including the CIA and their CIA COG division, or whatever you want to call it, and their SAP, Special Access Programs, which I'm not supposed to talk about, and all the fusion centers that we are not supposed to know about. They all have this information and refuse to act upon it. Next week, according to our sources, which have been validated in more than one multiple sources, or we'll be moving more guns international across the Mexican border. We will be photographing, and we're typing our hand, and we're telling, we're talking to someone else here on this camera. Not we're not just talking to, we're talking, we're sending a message to someone else. We're tired of your BS. We're coming after you. Simple as that. We will photograph your weapons. Amen. We will document, or since the Congress and the Senate does not want to do this, since the FBI, for whatever reasons they've got, don't want to get involved in this because of the White House and their administration does not want us to continue. Absolutely. To when they get out of control, they force people to do desperate things. Going through, If they don't want to continue, then we will continue it for them. And we will give the information to them. And we will document it. I've been on this thing for 10 years, Alex. 10 years. You've been on it with me for at least four. Now, it's been vetted more than once. We have been so desensitized on this international gun running that they are now, I think, that they can get by and cram it right down our throat, and we're not going to do a damn thing about it. 
I personally, number one, am putting it with my career, my life at 78 years old and saying one simple thing, we're coming after you. You're not gonna steal my country anymore. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm a realist. And I want my country back. Absolutely, well, amazing words. Uh, and, and, and let's put the House Oversight Committee phone number up. You don't get an email there, you just put it in the box and then you send them your email, uh, oversight.house.gov. You can go there and click on the contact. There's a phone number also on the site. If we can, we can show that. And it's 202-225-0037, 202-225-0037. Uh, but folks, this is real here. You can also click right there and then email them. It says, blow the whistle. They want you to blow the whistle. Yeah, right. Let's start a WhiteHouse.gov petition to stop the White House from shipping more guns to ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Uh, we'll do that today. Gentlemen, I'm going to come back and do five more minutes with you, then I'm going to get to the other news. But just your courage is amazing. This isn't about having courage, folks, but there's got to be some bottom to this, is what Tosh and Colonel Smithmaker are saying. Where does it come next where the people on the bases are blowing the whistle? It's all going on. It's all illegal. It's going to the Middle East, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. It's totally insane. Congress has been told no one will do anything. I mean, this is crazy. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Stay with us. They're now getting a lot of these weapons into Europe, killing people there. Western governments have brought 5 million, quote, refugees in, most of them military-aged men to Europe. We don't know the numbers here. They'll claim, oh, a few hundred in Texas, and then it's a few hundred per high school, and then per middle school. I mean, my alma mater had 232 Syrian and Iraqi refugees last year. It was in the newspaper. The school's collapsing because of it. We called all the other schools. They had them, too, by the hundreds. Then they said, oh, Texas has gotten 400 refugees last year. It's thousands and thousands in Austin. They admit the, the, the C-130s land at night. Nobody's checked. They're just let in. They admitted the Associated Press. Minnesota's got 22% of these uh, immigrants have tuberculosis. Now they've got this flesh-eating bacteria. That's in the news. What is our uh, controlling elite thinking? Why are they so wed to jihad? Are they planning to let them have a big Tet Offensive here and use that Tet Offensive to take our rights? Here's the latest article up on Infowars.com. It's red-linked. Facebook, Twitter banning free speech to form virtual super state. Kit Daniels just wrote an article about the Bloomberg AP articles that whitewashed it all, put out an article basically breaking down the reality as they announced that we're all working with governments to shut down the anti-government speech. Talk about Benghazi, they, they restrict you, they ban you. Well, the answer is speak out more, get involved more, take action more. Now, we have just in a few minutes left here, and I appreciate Colonel Matt Smith, Mac, recently retired from the Marine Corps, and Robert Tosh Plumley, famous whistleblower, who for a decade's been exposing this, but the last few years got out, retired, uh, from what he was doing as contracting for the CIA and others, and has exposed it. And this is big stuff you're hearing. And, and, and I don't go, ooh, I'm breaking a big story. That's good for my show. I sit here with a rock in the pit of my stomach and go, I've got to really cover some stuff here that 99% of people are too scared to do because I know where it leads. I'm scared of where it leads if this continues. So the word has got to get out. It's getting more and more dangerous. Let me ask Colonel smith Mac and Plumley. Clearly, this is a tad offensive, too, with jihadis. Clearly, they know with these numbers, we're going to have San Bernardinos at some point when they all start activating on a weekly basis, maybe every day. And they've clearly said in Europe, we're banning your free speech because if you criticize Islam, they attack us. So the formula is bring them in, let them attack us. When they attack, take our rights. Just like give them stinger missiles, let them blow up airplanes. How does the political elite suspend logic at a level like this to be the cause of all of our crises, the cause of our problems, and then use the problems to kill what's left of the Western world? I mean, it's so transparent. How are they getting away with this, or do you disagree with that analysis, Colonel? No, sir, I, I agree with your analysis, and I, I think they're just betting, betting on the, uh, the hope of, and that the American people have apathy, and I, I just plead with our fellow American citizens, um, don't let this happen. I mean, imagine you're, you're Josephine Terry, the mother of Brian Terry, who's been lied to by our government, who Congress has uh, said they would help, and, and they, they haven't. There's a lot of bloviating, and haven't, haven't been in the government, uh, I understand, you know, the, the kind of the, you know, no, no, no offense intended, I'm part Polish, but the Polish salute where, you know, nobody knows what's going on and nobody takes responsibility. That's part of the, I think, the uh, modus operandi here. And uh, until we as citizens 
say enough, like Tosh and I have said and others, you know, enough. We're we are going to expose this come hell or high water because this is we this is our country, dang it. This is not going to happen. This is the anymore. line on the sand. We've got folks in government and out. This is the line on the sand. Yes, sir. I say if we don't stop here, if we don't stop this and 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 put our spine up and, and be and my God, we're Americans, not Americans. Uh, we 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 got to I'm, I'm willing to put my life, my blood, my money, my everything on the line. I know Tasha's too, you as well, sir. And you got the, the Terry family, for God's sakes, like the, like the families of the, the Benghazi thing. They just want some damn answers. Well, it just shows how ruthless they are. 13 hour stand down, eight hours of combat, let everybody die, then lie about it. I mean, it's just and, and Hillary lying about being in combat, being shot at like Brian Williams. And then there's a shock 75 percent poll out. I'll still say that they want her to keep running, even if she's indicted. I mean, Tosh, I get you. It's lying in the sand. And, and if we know about this, Tosh, I wonder what else is going on. The good well, news is, and I know you talk to them too, a lot of current military people, officers, special forces, you name it, they've never been more awake and more upset. So the establishment better understand they're not invincible. Tosh? All right, let me go back to the question you asked. Very simple as this. You asked why they let it go on. It's very simple. Would you take $265 million if you had your own private foundation set up if it required you to let this stuff go on? Simple question, yes no, or no? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Well, some people in Congress and the Senate and the, and the POTUS and the White House would, and they have, and they've demonstrated So that they, they sold us out. We, we've been sold they out. Demonstrated that they have. Now, let me back up here, and I don't want to hog the whole airways. The, one of the things that we have not covered here is that the investigation that I was investigating with, with, with Bill Conroy of Narco News, as far back as 209 and 210, Brian Terry, Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was working. I didn't know it at the time, but Brian Terry was working on the very same thing that we're talking about here. He was told to stand, not stand down, he was told to halt. That was the word used, halt, H-A-U-L-T, halt. Halt his investigation uh, for uh, safety's sake, uh, political reasons. Anyway, he ended up getting killed in Peck Canyon. Questionable death on that matter, which we're currently investigating. Uh, we've been told to halt, halt our investigation. It's not healthy to go there. Well, I'm going there. I've already been there, and I'm going to stay there, and so is Matt. And so anyway, we're using your airways, uh, Alex, and we appreciate that. No one else will touch this information. Uh, we've just been out there for 10 years. It goes way back. I'm not going to ramble on and on like that. But those two things I wanted to bring up. Brian Terry is dead. And he was investigating the very same thing that we're investigating right now. I understand. Well, well listen, God bless you. Everybody needs to get involved. And you take this video. We do an article tomorrow and just keep hammering. So when they shoot down airplanes with the Stinger missiles uh, or go into a school with the machine guns and kill 300 people, the Second Amendment in America doesn't get blamed. The veterans don't get blamed. The gun owners don't get blamed. The criminals that have gone too far and hijacked this nation get blamed. We'll get another update from you soon, gentlemen. But the answer for all our safety, stay in the sunshine and keep getting this word out. And thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Colonel. Sure. There they go.